Cups, Virginia Beach. Who's here for the first time? Oh, great. We're glad to have you. We're sponsored by the Kaufman Organization out of Kansas City, Missouri. We're one of uh, yeah, over 100 now communities in the country. Number 73. We get together every Wednesday morning to have a cup of coffee and talk about entrepreneurship and help somebody with their pitch. So first I'd like to ask, um, we'll, we're, we're run by organizers who are um, volunteers. Brittany and Dave and Marat and Ray White's not here today. Who else? A couple people not here. I'm Karen Eagle and I teach entrepreneurship at Old Dominion. Are there any announcements for things coming up this week? Right, Steve. Uh, this, af uh, this afternoon from 4 to 6 is the Unwind at the Byron Ellen Art Gallery. I, I've got that old monarch down there at ODU. 4 to 6, wine and little tasties and a uh, good place to come and network and just meet people around. Great, yes. We do not, we have an opening next week. So if anyone wants to present or knows anyone who should present, send them our way, onemillioncups.com slash Virginia Beach. Ooh, sounds like a plan. Okay. Don't exams? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're back in the students here today from ODU, a couple of entrepreneurs who are checking this out to think about pitching their business that is already up and running. At least the, the one that you guys have together and they have multiple businesses. So. Is that, is any, any other um, announcements? Great, so this week we have Donna and Gretna who are gonna come and tell us about their luxury mobile barber shop. This is awesome, take the floor. Uh, I'll give you the one minute warning when we get up to that, so okay. six minutes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Gretna Smith and this is Donna Smith and together we are fourth generation, a luxury mobile barbershop. Today we're going to tell you a little bit about who we are, how we came to be, what we do, the things we have learned, and some of our plans for the future. So sit back and relax. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I am a fourth generation barber. It all started with my great-grandfather that unfortunately I never got to meet. He passed away in 1967 and I didn't come around until a few years later. Um, my grandfather and my father are still practicing barbers. My grandfather is 85 years old. He's been cutting hair for 68 years now, and he still cuts hair six days a week. His barbershop is attached to his house, so he walks out of his kitchen in the morning and he goes to work. Uh, my father's barbershop is just across town, so uh, they're a little friendly competition, but uh, there's, there's enough uh, business for everyone. So you could say that barbering is really in my blood. It was later in life decision for me to, to go into business, but I'm so glad I did. I love what I do, and definitely now the way I do it. It's been a dream of mine to own my own barbershop, like the other barbers in my family, so uh, this has been my, my year. So where did the idea of a luxury mobile barbershop come from, you might ask? About two and a half years ago, my dad sent me a Facebook article and it was about a woman who took a 1950s Airstream, silver Airstream, and turned it into a retro salon. And while that's all fine and good, uh, I am a barber, not a cosmetologist, and there is a difference. And so I said, I need a barber shop. So we went, we went searching for, for the vehicle that we wanted, and uh, the idea of the luxury mobile barber shop was born. We began to research this idea, took a leap of faith, and here we are. So what is it? Fourth generation, it's a self-contained, full-service luxury mobile barbershop. We travel to people's homes or businesses to provide barber services, such as haircuts, beard trims, straight razor face shaves, which not many people do anymore, uh, straight razor head shaves. Every service is finished with a hot lather shave around the ears and the neck like the old school barbers used to do. Again, you don't find many barbers that do that anymore. And also, some of you may remember back in the day they had hand massagers that they would do a neck and shoulder massage with. I have that as well. That's a family tradition and I have to carry that on. And that's, the guys always say that the uh, neck shave is their favorite part of the haircut until they get to the massage. So, um, we have met a few clients, various different places, such as uh, grocery store parking lots, traffic intersections, people get us to roll down the window and, and speak to us there. 
I do provide an old school service with a modern day twist, as you can see. Our thought was that people are busy and often don't have time to stop and get a haircut. It's, it's a chore that they have to do. Time is precious and we do respect that. In April of last year, we purchased this, 19, this 2015 Mercedes 3500 Sprinter van. It's the longest and tallest Sprinter that, that is made. We took the van to another local entrepreneur named Chris Johnson of Legacy Limo and Luxury Coach. And we were discussing the upfitting of the van. He had never built a mobile barber shop before, but his idea was that if he could fit it, then he could build it. That's exactly what he did. We launched the van with a big grand opening and a ribbon cutting with the Chamber of Commerce, and that was on November the 5th. And we've been in business ever since. That's Chris right there. He's the one responsible for, for putting it all together. Presently, we primarily operate in Virginia Beach. I do have some clients in Chesapeake and Norfolk. We did a soft launch in November because Gretna was having knee surgery on November the 8th. We have then since started pushing to increase our numbers and um, our client base and just become more busy working. We've had a few, few surprises. We didn't realize that Virginia Beach had a zoning uh, ordinance that prohibits us from driving to a spot, setting up shop, and waiting for clients to drop by. We purchased a pager system specifically because we wanted to provide the, these services to personnel working in medical complexes. The idea was that he'd come and pick up a pager, go back to work, and then receive a pager page when it was their turn to get a haircut. But the city ordinances prevent us from doing so. Similarly, if we wanted to go to a shopping center and do the same thing, we could, we would have, we could do that. However, we would have to have a peddler's license, according to the city of Virginia Beach. But that would only allow us to operate in that specific area for six months, and then we could never, ever go back there again after that six months. So this is really not some, an avenue that we decided to, to take. With regard to these lessons learned, we learned that we did not need to, to spend as much money for advertising as we did. As many of you probably know, when you start a, start a new business, all kinds of people contact you trying to sell their marketing strategies. We did more than we really need to do. So what's next? We're in the process of setting up a scheduling application. Our customers have indicated that they would like to be able to make their own appointments online. This app will also allow us to send confirmation and reminder messages. Right now, we're focusing on growing our business. We're looking to serving retirement communities, auto dealerships, and military personnel, just to name a few areas of, for potential growth. In the next couple of years, our focus will be expanding the business to different types of luxury mobile services. And with that, we're open to any questions you may have.